Alright, so here we are in the game. Just started a new game, and I'm going to show you how to set up uh, Jubar based scripts as well as some other essential things what you should do when you start a new game. So, um, first thing you want to do is since you're, the cockpits uh, have these health bars, just click on your health bar and it will change it um, to the proper display. The next thing to do is you need to set up your controls. So you need to go to options, uh, set up your options, but in controls, there are certain ones that you must use um, for LitQ purposes. First of all, freight exchange, I always make this um, shift F to start with. Interface, interface is where you're gonna find all of the LitCube controls that you need to set up. So here's satellite monitoring. This is what we just um, installed, the optional script. I always make this equals. Incoming Unclaimed ship, that's a good one to have. I'll make that O. You need to, let's see, MLCC console. This is important. This is the console that you need to bring up the MLCC menu. MLCC is what you use to call in the big fleet um, and uh, use fleet management in late game. MLCC go is what you use to actually execute the command. So once you call in the ships, you hit your shift, uh, shift B or MLCC go to actually bring the, um, have the fleet execute their command. So player console, that's another very important one. Um, Litcube, uh, ship compendium, uh, templates, UT blacklist, all of that very important functionality is contained in the player console. Another thing is quick sh shuttle fuel. Uh, I always make this semicolon and a quick shuttle fuel home. So the quick shuttle is basically it's a ship that sits at a dock of yours that has a bunch of energy cells. Um, you hit the semicolon, it'll jump in, it'll automatically restock your own energy cells, then it'll jump back and wait for you to call it in again. Uh, the quick shuttle reaper, uh, that's another very important one to have. Uh, is it basically just like the quick shuttle fuel? You have it set, you have it home based at a dock, you hit the button and it jumps into a sector, your current sector, it will go around and pick up all of the floating ware containers, so all the random loot in the sector after a big battle, and it will jump back home and it will deposit them all at the station. This is actually a really good way to make money early on because you can have that stuff being automatically sold um, by dock agents. Another thing is flagship for tug. Uh, you don't have to use tug, but tug lets you basically automate um, it lets you automate, oh, sorry, I should make that shift, uh, shift Y. It lets you automate salvage. So if you find an abandoned like X-Wing out there, you can claim it and then you can flag it for tug. Your tug ship will jump in, uh, it'll dock the X-Wing with it automatically. It'll take the X-Wing back to your base. It will uh, strip the X-Wing so it will drop off all its lasers and stuff. And then it will um, it'll be ready to do it again. So you don't have to give any commands except click on the X-Wing you just captured, hit shift Y, and then it will automatically go. And then in terms of internal distribution network, this is the other uh, Jubarbe script we installed. We'll make that shift equals. This is basically a freighter, um, a freighter dock agent system, so you can have a central base and outlying factories all taken care of without having to set up couriers. Or basically, if you don't like to use Saturn complex hubs because they're overpowered, you can use the internal distribution network. Uh, to handle your wares. Uh, Old Mayhem used to use this, um, but it's optional, you don't need it. All right, so anyway, now that we've set up all the controls, um, I'll show you what satellite monitoring looks like. So right now we don't have any advanced satellites. Um, I'm gonna actually, all of the L, uh, Star Wars OU game stars, I give you at least one advanced satellite. So here we go, we're gonna eject advanced. it. So here we are in the resistance sector because this is the resistance game start. Um, as you can see, there is one enemy ship here, it's some random Imperial command. ship. So if we hit the equals button, which is our satellite monitoring uh, button, this is the satellite monitoring menu. Right now we only have one sector here, but it will tell you very valuable information. As you can see, we have one enemy ship, no enemy stations, abandoned ships, this is really important, abandoned ships, wares that's floating loot containers, so you can send your Reaper, Reaper shuttle, smugglers, um, 
traders that if you scan with the police scanner, they'd be revealed to be pirates, and how many jumps away that sector is. All right, so what I've done now is I used the script editor to cheat. I probably cut it out of the video. But anyway, I gave myself a satellite in every single sector in the entire game, just to demonstrate. So Aladdin Hill, see, we've got a satellite, even though we've never been there. Every sector has a satellite in it. This is just a cheat for demonstration purposes. So if we open our satellite monitoring now, this is what you, eventually what you want to do. So you want to spend the early game going around, putting satellites in all the sectors, and then checking your satellites, satellites monitoring regularly. So you can look here. You can see which ships are, which sectors are really dangerous. You can also find abandoned ships. So like here, uh, prophecy fulfilled. This pirate sector. In this sector, here's an abandoned ship right here. So this is basically what you need to use satellite monitoring for in the early game. So you can find all these abandoned ships and salvage them. As you can see here, Sanctuary of Darkness, we've got a wear container. Uh, so there's a floating wear right here. We can, we can actually send the Reaper shuttle, uh, if we had that set up, by changing this setting. And then we could just hit enter on any of these and it would automatically loot those sectors. Um, or you could jump or any of those other things so anyway this is satellite monitoring it's really handy um you need to set this up in the early game so you can go around getting all those abandoned ships um i don't know if you know but in lit cube any ship can bail in x3 um only the ship you were shooting at like the, the player was shooting at could actually bail uh meaning the pilot jumps out of the ship and you can claim it in lit cube any ship in combat can bail. So you might find an abandoned Star Destroyer that was nearly destroyed by the Rebels or something, and you can claim that. Um, and you need to check this constantly because Litcube has these NPC scavengers running about that go ahead and claim all the abandoned ships. Uh, they're really annoying. Um, so, you know, you can always shoot them or whatever, but uh, abandoned ships won't stay there forever. So you need to be on top of this and go salvage all your abandoned ships. Uh, one more thing uh, I nearly forgot. When you start a new game in Lit Cube, using the right mouse click to shoot, um, like where the mouse is pointing, is a really bad idea because you shoot very slowly and the lasers aren't nearly as big and obnoxious as they were in regular X3. So the way to shoot is you need to use auto fire. So down here, auto aim semi, you hit the K button by default, and you need to turn auto aim to on. Now, of course, that's not actually going to do anything if you continue to shoot with right click. The way that works is, let me find a ship to shoot at. I'll shoot at our satellite. satellite. Is you use left control. So left control is how you use auto aim. So notice that my crosshair is not pointed at the satellite, but if I hit left control, Okay, no, that didn't work. But if I hit left control, it will automatically shoot whatever I'm targeting. So this is how you actually do combat. Let's find one of our ships right here. And as you can see, I'm hitting it with perfect accuracy, even though I'm not. my mouse is nowhere near it. This is how you fight in Lit Cube. I know it's kind of cheaty, but it's really the only way to play Lit Cube, because you shoot so slowly, you cannot afford to miss any of these shots. <clears throat> But anyway, that's how you uh, that's how you shoot. Uh, left control, make sure auto aim is on. You can use the mouse if you want, but once you miss your shot, it's gonna really suck if you uh, get wrecked because you can't hit anything. All right, that should do it. Um, if you want to look into internal distribution network, just check out Jubarberry's forums on the EagleSoft website. I'm not gonna go over it here. Um, and that should be it for the scripts and the controls uh, that I have a in the additional files in when you download Star Wars OU I do have some tips on LU such as using the auto aim you should go through all of that because if you're new to LU your uh, a lot of that will become very uh, very good information to have all right and that should do it